There's been a lot that we've been up to in 2016. Like I said, we're keeping the foot on the gas pedal. There's a lot more coming in 2017. A, a main one that I just want to highlight is around the convergence. You see that in Dave, right? He's taking on new personality. I love it. But that, that, that experience, that user interface, that is going to become the place that is, will control all of the devices at all of your branch locations. So somebody asked a question, I think, earlier on you know, CMC and, and how it all works together. It works together well today. Going forward, it's going to be even more integrated. So optimization policies can be set you know, at an organizational level for uh, across all your sites or at a site level for specific locations or really exciting you know using the same language of policy for how you want to steer traffic and different application types how do you want to optimize them turn it on turn it off so that's all going to be embedded into uh, the Steel Connect manager interface with that um, would you like to say a few words about some of the stuff that we're working on in uh, well, very quickly as I said um, as Josh was saying we were running fast last year we did nine releases between April and December, agilely deli delivering. Um, we've got a very busy year ahead of us again. So some of the main points here is the control around uh, quality-based uh, path selection, um, some VRF network segmentation technology being added into it, the routing enhancements. We were kind of talking about that, about we don't need routing on the overlay, but we need routing in the branch for integration. So we're doing that both on the WAN side of our box and also the LAN side of the box. Um, hyperscale, you know, uh, these demos with 20 sites is great, but that's not what the real world is. So we're looking at both topologies, we were mentioning it, multi-mesh or multi-hop, as well as the scale to enterprise class size. So thousands of sites being very important there. Um, HA again, it was kind of glossed over there, but a lot of places, we were talking HA in the data center, but also in branch and certain applications, there is you know, deployment in HA. So we support a HA pair of active standby today of an SDI gateway in the branch. We're looking at active, active and some other modes of HA there also. Again, addressing what our customers are asking us for being very important there. Um, SCM deployment, again, there are, uh, it's currently in Amazon run by or operated by Riverbed. Depending on some of your, your verticals, there may be need for sovereignty over the data. So having the ability to run it in a VPC of your own, still in Amazon, or possibly going on-prem with the SCM. They're all things we're working on also. Um, improvements to the SD-LAN, I'm going to talk quickly. This was kind of the first half of the year. This is beyond it, but SD-WAN improvements. And then Josh talked here about the, um, the integration of Steelhead with Steel Connect Manager, a big deal. And then a lot of intelligence about making a lot of this more software-defined. So manually creating mesh topologies, same way as the bulk import, you gotta to go to a software-defined world where you want to define that through policy. What does your mesh topology, mesh topology look like? And then just have it built for you with some feedback. So telemetry coming from the Steel Connect boxes, being processed by the Steel Connect manager and the Steel Central, giving you traffic engineering information to allow you re rearrange your overlay, overlay topology. They're all kind of intelligent things we're looking at doing there to Again, add more easy button to what's going on and leverage the, the intelligence uh, around software defined. Yeah, and just one other quick note, because it's uh, kind of a passion of mine, right? Uh, when you work at these hyperscale, um, if you don't integrate or automate, you're dead, right? We know that, especially when you're dealing with scale. So um, we, we purposely left it up, but I'm telling you that we have, we're about 85%, 80% complete uh, work for the service providers. And what doesn't the service provider want to do? They don't want to click, they don't want to import. So we have a, a service delivery platform that we're building right now, again, about 80% complete, that allows carriers to plug in their billing system. So when a user customer says, hey, I'm Acme.com, this is my company, I would like Steel uh, SD-WAN, this is the functions that I want. We can go into the billing system, suck all that information out with no human intervention whatsoever, down to delivering that virtual machine to a device of the carrier's choosing, our box, something in the middle, white, gray, and, and uh, uh, black, uh, their choice, and fully automatically, fully automatic. Full, in With a two full, clicks. <clears throat> yeah, two clicks. <laughs> <laughs> with full on automation, bring up everything with no human intervention at all. And if it should die, for whatever reason, disk or VM, et cetera, will spin up another one before you even realize what happened. 
okay? And that's coming later this year. I'm very excited about it because it is that it's geared towards service provider and large enterprises. So just to clarify, you're saying that you're going to have a solution so that carriers or service providers can offer SD-WAN services to their customers and it's powered by you. That's right. That's correct. That's exactly right. Okay. Or if you're a large enterprise, you need that automation as well. Okay. It's Uber automation. Okay. Um, I have an unrelated question. Sure. Absolutely. Why isn't Wireshark now called River Shark? <laughs> because it's a, it's a passion of mine. Uh, <laughs> for those of you watching, you know me from Shark Fest. Um, so it's Wireshark is an open source platform that deserves to be in the open source. We are the Wireshark corporate sponsors. But in fact, just yesterday, you may be watching, there was a request that said, Hatsang, could you ask Gerald to add this feature? And my answer was, hell no. <laughs> it's open source. Go through the open source community. Because once you become a corporate guy, then it becomes a sales thing. And the value of that, one of the most successful open source projects in the world, gets devalued, in my opinion. So I am rabid when I put a firewall between Wireshark and Riverbed. We give the resources for Gerald to do his thing, but it is 100% a, uh, but we also also go to the customers and say, hey, you like Wireshark? We're the corporate sponsors. Talk to us. That's fantastic. We know about answer, visibility. Yeah. Great, great answer. We love yeah, that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, thank you guys. Thank you.